Hey friends, it is good to give you another video to kind of work with. We're going to be doing a relief style castle. This relief style castle, uh, I wanted to utilize some of the things that we had at home. Um, pencils, obviously, a little bit of paper, and maybe some of y'all have a little bit of glue. And what I wanted to do was to give you a chance to use and kind of create it so it's kind of popping off the paper a little bit. This is a toilet paper roll, as you can well see. I also have some paper towel roll. And what I want you to do, or you can do, is to take some of this and use this for the towers of your castle. Now, the paper towel roll is a little too big. You definitely need to trim that down. How tall you want that is totally up to you. It could be the same size as a toilet paper roll or it could be a little bit taller. It's up to you. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take some scissors and you're going to cut that roll down so it's not quite as tall as the original. And that looks pretty good. That's about the size of a toilet paper roll. Could be a little bit taller if you want it that way. And what you'll do is you'll take your scissors and we want to take this roll and we're going to cut this in half so that it goes like this. And then I'm going to flip it over to the other side and I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. I'm going to cut right down the middle. Nice straight line, the best that I can make. Okay. So now I've got two halves of paper towel, or the roll. And what you're going to do is you're going to make these rolls into the towers of your castle. And as you can see, it kind of comes off, off that paper and gives you that kind of a 3D effect. What I want, in order to make this stick, I need for you to take the edges of these rolls and I need for you to roll them and kind of flatten it out so you have like a little flat edge to work with. See that little flat edge? But you need to do it for both sides. So I've got one side done. I need to do the same thing for the second side. And of course, folding that over, creasing it real good. I don't want this flat, so I'm going to keep it kind of curved. I'm going to bend it back a little bit so it stays nice and curved. But these two flaps right here and right here are the two sides that you're going to put glue on. I'm going to set that one to the side so I can get the second one done. And so this right here is the second roll. And again, I'm going to bend it a little bit so that it kind of keeps All right, perfect. once you have got the sides folded like this, you want to turn this over and decide which looks like the top, this side or this end. Doesn't matter which one. I usually go for the one that is the widest. This looks a little bit wider for the bottom, that leaving this section, which is a little bit skinnier at the top. And same thing here, looking at this, they're pretty even. I'd say I'll let this side here be the bottom and this area up here being the top. Now what you want to do is to create the crenellations that would be at the top of each one of these towers. So what you'll do is you'll take your scissors and you're going to cut a few little lines into this. Don't make them too long, maybe about a quarter of an inch or half inch at the most, not very big, not very long. Maybe you could even measure it like with the width of your fingernail, okay? And you want to fold those down so that it creates like this, kind of like a tooth looking section. They're called crenellations. And that's one of the things that allowed the archers and the, the knights to be protected as they were shooting arrows at their enemies. So again, I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold this down behind that section. And now I've got that little uneven area now. Gluing this takes a little bit of time. 
Uh, sometimes these like to pop up off the paper. So a lot of times I'll make sure that it's nice and curved. And then I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna put a little bead of glue all the way down the edge of this. You don't need a lot of glue, just a little bit. And when you flip these over and you place them onto your piece of paper, you will need to hold this for about 40 to 50 seconds. So deciding where you wanna put this is important. You don't wanna put it all the way to the very bottom of your paper. You won't have any room for your castle to have ground in front of it. So you wanna bring this up to about the middle of your paper and you can kinda of press that down so it kinda of sticks a little bit. Try to keep them straight up and down. Do the same thing here. Now it could be a little bit lower than the other one. It could be a little bit higher than the other one. It really won't matter as long as they're about the same placement. Now you gotta hold this for a good 30 to 40, I'm sorry, 40 to 50 seconds. You want to make sure that it sticks and that it really kind of stays on that piece of paper. I'm gonna move this off for the moment. I have a piece that I've done earlier that has had a chance to dry a little bit. And what I want to do is to show you the drawing part of this. Once you've got your towers in place, we need to create the ground that this castle is going to sit on. I'm gonna use a little black crayon, and, and uh, don't worry if your crayons are broken. Use whatever you've got. In this case, my black has broken, so I'm gonna use it anyway. And I'm gonna go from the edge of my paper all the way across to the other side. So I'm gonna start, and you wanna make sure that you touch and go to the very bottom of that tower. Go straight across to the other tower, and again, drawing that line so it goes all the way across to the edge, other side of your paper. In between these two towers, you want to connect them with one straight line. Just like we did the crenellations with the towers, you need to have crenellations on the top of this. This is now your wall for your, for your castle. Easy way to do that is creating little squares or little rectangles. And I'm gonna go all the way across, drawing those little squares and little rectangles. Your castle may need to have, well, will need to have a door so that people can come in and out. Your choice as far as the shape of it, it can be an oval or an arch or it could be a rectangle. Uh, you decide what you want to use. I'm gonna do an arch. I just think that kinda is castle-like. And usually these doors would be made out of wood. Sometimes they could be the drawbridge coming down, sometimes they could be something else. But what I want is to create wood. So you would end up having like slats or beams of wood on that door. Now in order for that wood to stay together, you would need to add usually metal straps that would strap that wood together. Now our castle would have windows in it, but they wouldn't be very large windows, especially this outer edge, these towers and this wall. It would be very narrow, skinny windows. These narrow, skinny windows were used by the archers to shoot at their enemies. When you do this, you don't want them really low to the ground. They're gonna be higher to give advantage for the people in the castle. So when you're doing your windows, draw them so that they're very skinny and tall, high, up onto that tower. You might even wanna put a few of them right here in your wall. Like that. Now one, another thing that you might include with your castle are towers inside. 
uh, these towers would not be like these. These are more for defense. These towers would be where you might live, where you'd have rooms and, and your people of the castle would end up uh, staying. So easy way to do that. Think shapes. So I'm going to go with a simple rectangle. Bringing it down. Kind of touch it to this one right here. And then, of course, you got to have a roof. So a lot of towers would have a, a, a peak or a spire to it. And I've done that with a triangle. Now, my second tower I'm going to add, I'm going to let this one be a little further back. When you start doing that with uh, shapes, you will probably want to create a smaller rectangle and a shorter rectangle. That kind of gives a little bit of depth that this particular tower is a little further back than this one right here. Inside these towers, they probably have windows. So you could easily add some windows if you want to take that uh, crayon or pencil that you're working with and kind of fill those in, you are welcome to do that. And we'll fill that in. And I'll probably do the same thing for the ones in my towers. As well as my wall. Now, sometimes my students like to have flags on top of their castle. So if you want a flag, add a flag. In this case, I'll just do like a little pennant, which is like a little triangle waving in the wind. Most of my castle is completed. Oh, one other thing you might want to add are like the bricks or the stone that your castle is made out of. That brick or that stone would be stacked upon one another. Do you have to do all of them? No. But by putting a few little marks like I've done here, it gives the illusion that it's made out of stone or made out of some type of a brick. Maybe I'll put another one right up there. Okay. I'm not going to put it in the towers in the background because they're further away and you would not see those small little details like you would up close with the wall. Behind my castle, I need to start adding some background. I want layers of hills and mountains behind my castle. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to put uh, a line from the edge across to the edge of my tower. I don't want it to be perfectly straight. Let's change it up so it's not exactly straight across. And I think I'm going to add a second hill behind that. I'm going to bring it up to the edge. And maybe even a mountain even further back. In this case, I'm going to bring it above, but I don't want to draw through my tower. I want to skip to the other side and what that does is it will give the illusion it's behind my castle. And then I'm going to bring it all the way to the edge of my paper. Now it looks like I've got some hills in the background. The next step, of course, is adding some color. If you've got some crayons or markers or color pencils, feel free to pull those out and, and use those on your, on your castle. I've got some crayons. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize these crayons. Now I, I like crayons because it allows you to mix and blend colors, especially if you only have just a few crayons to choose from. When you're coloring your ground, try to keep your lines going side to side. Even with your hills, you'll do the same thing. Try to keep your lines going side to side. What that does is it makes it look like it's the ground. And I'm going to bring that green right up to the edge of my door, but I'm going to leave a little path that kind of gets wider down here to indicate like that's the section that people walk on a lot. 
So I've got some green. I'm gonna fill this in real fast with my green crayon. And then I'm going to add another color. I'm gonna incorporate a little bit of brown. Here where they would go into the castle, you might see it packed down or no grass growing in that section. So I'm gonna use a little bit of brown. Now, nice thing about crayons, it's easy to mix those colors. Like under my castle, I might have a little bit more brown or around the edge of my towers, I might have a little bit more brown. So I might mix that in there. Maybe in my grass, I've got a little bit of a bald spot or a little patchy spot that doesn't have as much grass in it. Maybe over here, I've got the same thing. Now my castle, can be colored any color that you want. I'm gonna stick with the brown, but you could do as creative as you wanted to. If you wanted to create purple and pinks, you're welcome to do that. This is your design, your creativity. With your walls, because they're kind of go up toward the sky, you want those lines to be vertical. Instead of horizontal like we did with the grass where it went side to side, this time you want your lines to be vertical. That means it goes up and down. And that will give the illusion of height with your castle. Now, again, our door was made out of wood. That door, obviously, would be brown because of it being made out of wood. Well, I don't really want a brown wall of my castle and a brown door and have everything all the same color. It gets boring. So I want to change that up a little bit, and I'm going to incorporate another color into what I've got. So let me finish this wall up a little bit. I'm getting a little sloppy around those edges. Please take your time. Miss Perry's not doing very good when it comes to coloring this in. It's kind of getting a little messy. Try to do a little bit better. Now, my, my door I want that to really stand out. They, maybe they used a different type of wood. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use yellow and mix it into the brown. By doing that, it causes my brown to take on a different tone, a different color, so that it's not the same brown anymore, and you can kind of see that. Even with my wall, I think I'll incorporate a little bit of blue into that. I'm going to do it lightly so it doesn't overpower my brown, but it will cause my brown to look a little bit different and a little bit darker so that there's not so that there's a little more contrast in between those two types of brown. So a little bit of blue in there. Now, it is totally up to you what you want to do as far as your background. I completed a picture earlier, and I'm gonna share that with you. I opted to create a lot of color with my, with my choices. As you can see, I've still got the green at the bottom. But at my hills, I've opted to kind of change them up a little bit. And I kind of went from darkest, closest to us, and gradually getting a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter. A lot of times our hills in the very far background will take on like a purple or a blue tone. So I opted to do purple mountains. My sky, I got real colorful and decided to kind of do like a sunset. 
Those of you who want to do a castle but don't have the paper towel rolls or toilet paper rolls, I've got another option if you'd like. This one is a little more simple. Again, you're just using your shapes. I ended up making this particular castle brown or uh, gray. But try to be creative. Come up with your own version, your own style, and uh, message me through Dojo and send a picture. And I look forward to seeing your work be as creative as you possibly can. And I miss you and love you and hope you can enjoy this particular project.